Hello, family. Thank you for coming over to the house tonight. And just kick off your shoes and relax your feet. Party on down to the SKB. We're kicking. Just kick it. Just kick it. Okay, you don't come to another episode where we're going to be asking the question of... Why are you telling my business? Don't be telling my business. Hmm. Why not? Because a can-can and a can-can, a can-can, a can-can, and a wheel. Now we're off to... Happy Sunday, everyone, and happy, happy, happy weekend. All right, y'all know who we're going to talk about. Y'all see on the screen. All right. And it kind of bewilders me that Dr. Heavenly is her age, but yet she does, well, she does things because she's human. So I'll give her that much. But for her to be a uh, connoisseur of investments and investing well, Dr. Heavenly, we could have told you, don't buy no Maybach, baby. Don't buy no Maybach. But it seems like she was just trying to floss in front of the other doctors, such as Simone and Dr. Jackie. And she probably want to touch bases with, uh, or shade bases, I should say, with Toya and a little bit of Quad. Okay, because she said she loved Quad. Quad is my baby. But sometimes what she say and what she do is totally different. They are vastly different. And I'm talking for the negative. Now, even a blind man or unrational person could tell you, uh, Heavenly, why do you want to purchase a Maybach? Okay, because to me, I don't know, it just seems like a gentleman's car, you know, a man's car. But that just may be me. <coughs> I'm, on, I'm making a video. Uh, what? Uh, didn't want me in here all the time. Huh? Videoing all the time. You see how my uh, son just come in here and just start conversations with me, knowing I'm videotaping. Oh, really Going about your business. Oh, my God. They don't have no room. I need a mansion just to hide from their behinds, okay? But anyway, we're going to go back to the Maybach and Dr. Heavenly purchasing one. And then a few, well, maybe uh, it's a year old or something. Hell, I don't know. But she's going to come out and tell people, the world, the whole YouTube uh platform that she couldn't afford that Maybach she bought like really Dr. Heavenly really okay I mean technically when you're talking about your investments and this that and the third you can take what little money you have or when you get your check you just take x amount of dollars out and put it in a savings or put it in Bitcoin to invest and you'll be good well, Heavenly, that's just not how it works. Because nine times out of ten, we really look at what bills we have. When you're talking to the common folk, you know, the the uh, middle, well, not even middle class, but middle class slash poverty people. Because, see, t to me, it's just two classes. You either broke or you got money. It's not a third class anymore. Everything is being viewed as very murky, very blurred. So I can safely say that I have a large amount of people that will agree with me that we don't have three classes anymore in the income status. We have poor and we have rich. That's just where it is, whether you see it or you don't. But you are always saying, Dr. Heavenly, you can get out there and work. You could get out there and work. Well, it just depends. You always have to have that overview of people's situations what they're going through their makeup when it comes to their family dynamics there's a lot of things you have to look at before you tell somebody oh you're gonna be like a jamaican and get uh five seven jobs really because you're not working on all of them eight eight hours a day all right <clears throat> but i kind of got sidebar there uh i'm bringing it back home where we're going to talk about you since you put yourself out there uh, and telling us your business it's really uh, a public forum you brought it to so we're gonna give you a little advice okay now I've always say, had said to myself you're a very rational person you are very well thought out before you make or uh, deduce your opinions on a particular subject or someone <coughs> I like thank you self 
I really do appreciate that. But then I do have my YouTube family to come back and back me up or tear me up and say, nah, you, you were way off the mark on this one. I need you to get it together next video. You know, that's what my fam, my YouTube uh, family tells me, okay? Kind of like my biological family. They don't take shit from me because they don't expect for me to put out shit. You know what I'm saying? So when you have such a reputation as that, you can't fall too far from the mark you always try to meet each day. <laughs> <clears throat> but anyway, going back to our topic of discussion. Now, see, Dr. Heblin, I remember when Jackie was building her house, and I think it was Toya. She was fooling around, tampering around, building her mansion as well. Uh, and Toya had this beautiful closet space in her so-called mansion that she was going. It was her dream mansion. She wasn't going to never sell it. They were going to live there until she got old and gray and all that kind of stuff, which we know was a pure lie. She flipped that house and got on out, and she's now ridden in it. She's renting out a, uh, what do you call that, a rented space house. Okay, which, you know, we ain't even going to try to make sense. We ain't even going to talk about uh, her and her predicament of why she made Eugene work as hard as she do. But yet she just a stay-at-home mom and she feels that she should have this, that, and the third. Okay, and all of them got big price tags to it. But like I said, she got one. Now, anything happened to Eugene, he, you know, goes, you know, out this plane of existence into another uh, world or whatnot. Uh, yeah, she ain't gonna find another one like Eugene. That's all I got to say. And she might be out there working instead of being at home. All right, but that's neither here nor there. We are back on, um, uh, the Maybach lady. Um, uh, Heavenly. Now, like I said, Heavenly is an investment firm group that I have definitely taken a part of and listened here and there. But then, you know, invested on that type of large scale. I don't care for that. I just, you know, do my meagerly type of. Uh, investing in myself put money up which I should be putting up more money than you know other things I've been trying to expose myself into or expose myself to which I don't got a lot of exposure and I, I, I just need to leave that shit alone okay because it's just more it's becoming more of an obsession than actually saving uh but anyway uh let me see well, I just going to take, you know, I try to be transparent with you all. You know, me and my daughter used to have a paparazzi business, okay? And we always were buying jewelry, buying jewelry, and we always kind of missed the mark on what we need to have in our inventory. So we just, what do we call it, collected all this a jury that we can't really do nothing with. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, a fad is a fad. Uh, what's the hot item, the ticket item that everybody's buying? You have limited resources uh, of getting the piece because um, it's one pot that everybody uh, gets from. And if you have, like, a clientele of six figures that you're making off your jury, of course, they're going to buy up all the jury from the little folks. You know what I'm saying? So, it was just very too much saturated for me. But I still love the costume jewelry. I really do. Now, it's not jewelry that you can wear, sleep in, all that kind of stuff. So, mm-mm. Don't do none of that. It's playtime jewelry. It's almost like you be buying it for your children when they're young. You know, playing dress up and stuff like that. But it's very unique. And it's and you could actually, <coughs> which they don't like you to alter the jewelry or anything of that nature uh, when you're in a consultant. And uh, But I used to tell people when me and my daughter used to sell uh, you can buy the, cause you're really kind of buying it for the statement piece or the, um, what do you call it? Uh, I'll say if you had a long chain and it had like a pendant is what I'm trying to do. Uh, say, you know, you get a pendant and you like it, you know, you're not really going to get that little piece wet or, or sewed up with sweat and all that kind of stuff. It just be your perspiration on the chain and it tends to, you know, turn because it's, you know, costume jewelry is not real jewelry. Um, but even silver, sterling silver you get, if you don't polish it, it would turn the weirdest yellowish couple, uh, color, yellowish, uh, yellowish color. Um, so you really have to keep the polishing cloth to keep that looking silver or shiny or whatnot. But that's nothing here, no doubt. I still like to buy paparazzi jewelry, guys. And sometimes I'm like, damn, I'm just a, I got all this other access jewelry we couldn't sell. Because, you know, we closed down the business after being in it almost two years. And it, it just wasn't making sense to me. You know, I was buying all jewelry, trying to sell to people. And they buy, you know, they buy what they want to buy. And, you know, it's still like a lot left over. <laughs> and I'm like, this don't make no sense. I'm making money if I can get those hot items uh, to sell. 
but if I don't have the hot items and I have to substitute for whatever they whatever's left that they have, that's kind of still unique. Uh, you know what I'm saying? It, 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 it doesn't make sense. So I had to cut it out, but it's like I'm still addicted to the jury. I need an AA. They need a uh, paparazzi jury anonymous um, uh, club that you can join. Because I, 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 I really, I have tipped the scales. I'm like, this is totally ridiculous. And I, and I like my consultants that I buy from. But it's like, ugh, you know, I, I can't see the rationale on this. Okay. So. I'm going to have to call, just do it cold turkey. Pick the ones that I like. And I'm only looking at one. She's called the Sunshine Lady. Um, her name's Dawn. And um, I like her. You know, she's an older woman. She takes care of her disabled husband. And, you know, she just has lots of fun. And she's a, a, a real Christian. She's a real uh, loving of the Lord type of person. She loves everybody. No matter what the color or whatever. Uh, or the, uh, culture. Uh, ethnicity she loved them all and i like that about her she has a farm cows chickens you know you'd be seeing all this stuff like damn this woman is really a country woman i'm liking her i'm digging her that's why i am attracted to her but uh to say this to say that sometimes you have to give up the shit and you just can't be out here uh using your money out frivolously when you might need it one day when we had to get on the run when the apocalypse comes out that kind of stuff whoo child and I don't even know if money's going to be a situation because where are you going to store, if you're trying to buy food and all that, where are you going to store it from if you have to be on the run? So it's kind of messed up. Because I, I even got into that as a disaster type food that you would buy at Sam's or BJ, you know, those um, like Costco's, those, um, what do you call it, club memberships, things that you go and buy um, food and accessories in bulk and all that stuff. Like, damn, you buy all this stuff, what if you have to leave? You can't, you can't pack all this shit with you, so I guess you have to have a bonker. <clears throat> now, if I knew what I knew then, back when I was young, I probably would have saved my money towards a bunker and had some of my family members that I love, you know, very deeply come and live there with me if anything broke off, you know what I'm saying? Broke off up in this society we live in or this world we live in. But anyway, <sighs> I say this to say that you got to do everything in moderation. If it's not making you money, you need to leave it alone. Just leave shit alone. Unless you just do it for a habit. And you got that kind of money to be invested in a habit. And to me, it's just like substance abuse. Okay. Ah, but anyway, moving off of me. Because you know I like to be transparent. I like to tell y'all stories sometimes. But I tell you this because I want you to do better than what I did. Hence what I try to tell my daughter. Now, if you get the knocking on your head on the same door that I had told you not to go in, then that's your business. But you never didn't say, uh, Cousin Dale, Auntie Dale, Grandma Dale, Mama Dale, you, you can't say that nobody tell you because I just told you. If it's not making you no money, it's not having you to have complete happiness and it's not infringing on your livelihood, don't do it. You know what I'm saying? Just don't do it. Back away. And it's just temptation. That's all it is. Temptation. You got to learn how to fight it. But anyway, we're going um, Dr. Heavenly. And she buying this old 187000 Maybach. Probably uh, the top of the line and all that kind of stuff. Now, my thing is, you can't live in that Maybach, that expensive-ass car. You only drive it uh, to certain places. You know, I guess when you want to show off to people. And you want to be the main talk of people uh, with them showing uh talking about how you showed up in this expensive ass car and how it looked and it made you look good too okay but that's all you're doing is you're riding from point a to point b all right or point a to however where you're going traveling and whatnot and usually you don't want to put a lot of miles on a vehicle like this it's really a showstopper car really 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 for the really rich and famous people that they have to have it you know what i'm saying they dream about it they they make the money to have it have three or four of them if it, you know if it need be but dr heavenly we could have told you baby you are somewhat of an everyday person you your profession and dentistry and other things you do is definitely solidified and we appreciate it but girl why did you need this manly luxury type looking car in the first damn place that's what we're trying to figure out you could have did nice with a mercedes um uh, C class, really, to tell you the truth. Like, who you bossing up for? You know, let the men handle all those trinkets like toys and 
uh, guns and all this other stuff that they, they like to invest in. They like to talk about, you know, manly, manly stuff. But you ain't had no business buying no shit like that. I know you were just following Dr. Jack and, and Dr. Simone and Toy Ass. I know, I know it just got your go and you felt like you had to compete with them. Understand it got it good, all right? But now you're saying daddy, which is you, what you call, which I definitely don't understand. Uh, no, he's my husband. He's my man. All that good stuff, my friend. All that, you know, like he call you buddy. You ain't got to call him daddy. He call you buddy. You could call him, uh, I don't know, buddy number two. Who knows, you know? But that's your nickname you have for each other. And I don't give a shit. That's okay. That's fine. That's y'all. Okay. But... Again, why would you buy a car like that other than you just trying to floss with other folks, you know? You always say, Dr. Jackie got it. What if Dr. Jackie didn't have it? Would she have to sell her shit, too? More than likely, she wouldn't hold any uh, ill will towards it. She just seemed like, if I ain't got it, then I, I know how to get rid of some stuff so I can keep it. You know what I'm saying? I'm just talking about the house. But if she don't have any really kids either. But like I said. Dr. Heavenly, you're living in somebody else's world. So I'm glad you really realized that, baby, I don't need this Maybach. And then she's talking about some compounding interest to get you a compounding uh, calculator and just show this, that, and the third. And I'm like, okay. And now I, I don't know why you had went out there showing your house either. I mean, just because Dr. Jack was renovating and trying to do good things and fabulous things. And you said Dr. Jack got money. So you can't compete with people that got money. And they have several revenue streams coming in, you know, because it makes me think, are you jealous of Dr. Jackie, too? She's a professional person. She's a doctor. She invests her money real well. She owns her practices and stuff. She don't lease buildings. She owns the shit. So <laughs> that is a different type of boss, you know what I'm saying? But, I mean, you make money. You, you, you're lucrative. You're, you're free-hearted with uh, your money and stuff. But in other words, you don't need that car, honey. You could have got you a little Volkswagen and went on about your merry way. It's just transportation. Just transportation. I mean, I don't even think your husband has no Maybach. But he ain't really into cars. He's into self-preservation. And I like that about uh, Dr. Damon. I really do. He's a stand-up guy. He believes in the old-fashioned way of taking care of family, wife, and his home. Like you said, you don't pay for nothing. Uh, and I'm like, well, in a sense you do, because if he's taking care of all the bills and his money's going towards that, then you're creating a nest egg for you and your family. Meaning if he needed to say, hey, buddy, um, do you got X, Y, Z? You're supposed to say, yeah, I got it. Cause you hold us down. I don't pay no bills. So yes, I got it. And you give it to him. So it's like y'all both working together, but for two different things to sustain y'all's livelihood and your family. So I get it. I get it. But, um. Yeah, you know, blind man could see you didn't need that damn car. Girl, what was that car going to do for you other than attract some uh, people to you that you probably didn't want to attract? Like those ones who get people for their shit, okay, because they ain't got shit and that's just their mentality. Or you flossing. Those are the two things, honey. So I'm glad you realized that you didn't need that car. Go and get you a sensible car that you drive around every day. That you don't have to just drive on the weekends or when you're taking a trip somewhere. Because you think about the wear and tear when you're out on those highways and byways. All those pebbles bouncing up against your car trying to break your windshield or dent your uh, car. Because shit ain't nothing. It ain't steel like it used to be back in the days in the 60s and 70s. Uh, and I would say 80s. Cars got cheaper material in it as time has gone on. You could just throw a medium-sized pebble at a car. You ain't got to have that much force when you're throwing it. And it'll leave a damn dent there. Okay? When you're riding on the highways and the byways, you have all these pebbles from other... Uh, that's really on the road that you can't see or it could be coming from one of those dump trucks. You know, the construction trucks that have material, they fly, you know, fly everywhere. Hit your windshield, hit your... Uh, your, your body side of the car uh even the trunk space you know what i'm saying it just depends on what you're going through and don't be in a hailstorm when uh you know difficult weather is out there or you know like a storm is coming up but it's raining down hail or little golf size buckets of uh ice that shit would tear up your car too and you're talking about you trying to have a hundred and eighty seven thousand dollar maybach girl they, i ain't want the bird shit to uh poop on my car you know what i'm saying when you got to sit there and idolize something like that you don't need it heavenly times okay i'm just saying 
but it was good commentary uh, on my part and good commentary that Dr. Heavenly gave me to talk about to let people understand. You have your who's who and you have your who's. OK, I'm a part of the who's. I'm not part of the who's who because that's talking money and they blow money and they don't give a shit about, you know, what it is or what it ain't. Took a bath, still stink. You know, I just had to say that. <laughs> I just had to say that. It was rhyming at the time. So I thought I'd just get something in there and maybe fall. But we missed it. We missed the mark real, real uh, closely. We we missed it, okay? But anyway, don't don't judge me. I just get on the tube and I just talk, look at my pictures, and I just have words to say. But, yeah. Uh, and I wouldn't really let your daughter hang around you too much when you're doing YouTube because she'd be picking up shit. And that last one I saw when she was sitting in the background laughing at you, uh, she don't need to really be in your vicinity, Dr. Heavily, when you, you, you're talking about people and you're doing things. Because sometimes kids feel like, damn, my mom can do it. I can do it to somebody else, too. And that's not right. When you're filming, when you're doing things, have a Laura outside somewhere doing young folks stuff she don't need to be looking at what her mama talking about especially when you be doing your reviews on your cast members of merit to medicine well, lord don't need to see that kind of shit and, and she she's i don't know but sometimes when you have actions you don't need your kids around you because you don't necessarily want them to mimic what you do into their lives because you know when you're doing shit and, and you talking shit about somebody you don't really want to put that on you know somebody else to pick up you know what I'm saying? I'm just saying. But that's all I got for this video. I ain't got no more. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.